Hello everyone, it's ancient history time today, as you can probably see. What we have here is a very old DAP Technologies Microflex PC-1000 Plus. This is a very old, like early 90s, late, early 90s, late 80s um, DOS portable terminal. It's basically, you know, old style PDA. As you can see, it's um, rather large. Uh, a friend of mine uh, picked this up at a thrift store. As you can probably tell, it was six ninety five. Um, it boots, but um, is probably with things of this vintage, they did they didn't actually have non volatile memory, so the whole system was stored on static RAM that was basically battery backed, and um, yeah, it didn't have the battery when I got it. Uh, it's got six hundred and forty k of system RAM, uh, eight hundred and ninety six k disk space, QCO two date forty two dash ninety, so it was nineteen ninety. And it was originally intended to run MS DOA, MS DOS 2.25, absolutely cutting edge. Made in Canada. So, anyways, I will power it up. It's vaguely interesting. Even it just boots to a please insert system disk screen. So you just go like this. And then it has an error because it doesn't have a disk and I don't even know how to hook the disk up. The only interface this has is a big D15. Um, that's the only port on the entire device. Um, on top of that, it doesn't even... Oh! It, only, it doesn't respond to some of the keys, apparently. So, apparently... If you push some of the keys, it doesn't do anything, and if you push some of the other keys, it does complain. Anyways, let's pop the lid off. This should have some amusing, you know, very early PC era components in it. Should be quite interesting. And if nothing else, you know what? It was only six dollars. So it's what you can see is, is the battery compartment went on like here, and it had like a a hand strap, you know, for truly mobile computing. Which is rather amusing. Oh, look, it, uh, my bad, it actually has two D sub 15s, one at the top and one at the bottom. I wonder if they're wired together. I guess we'll find out. So it appears it just has a number of screws. They're just all, all slotted screws, which is quite nice, actually. At least they're not something bizarre like Torx. I wish there was some way to detach this, but it certainly seems to be fairly strongly anchored. It runs on 8.2 volts approximately, so it was presumably a big stack of NICADs, because they didn't exactly have lithium ion at that point, did they? Such so the serial number is only four characters long, which tells you something about the volumes they were expecting to produce, if nothing else. It's all done in English and French, which I guess would definitely be rather indicative of it coming from Canada. The back's actually kind of lifting up slightly as it comes loose. It definitely feels like it's a little squeezed. Too. Oh wait, no, the screw was just gone. These are really long screws. The screw heads get stuck in the plastic. It's either old or they were very tight tolerance even at the outset. That one came loose. What is going on over here? Anyways. Oh, there we go. It is free. Oops. Oh boy. This is a cornucopia of amusing old electronics. Have a look at that. Wow. Hello, hack job. So, 
unfortunately, it appears that they bothered to connectorize it. So we can see here, there is some very interesting, very heavy ground strapping. So this metal clip is very aggressively grounded. There's a piezo beeper. And here is the battery lead. But have a look at that. There are pieces of Verbo board in here. So this is presumably production equipment and they have little tiny hand wired, point to point wired Verbo board assemblies in here. Oh wait, no, it's strip board. So the, somebody must have at the factory been doing these little hand soldered strip board assemblies and then point to point wiring them into the logic to make it work. It also looks like, I would assume this is also an add-on of some sort, considering it's held on by tape. And then you can see some interesting stuff in here. There's a little transformer, but I don't think it has a backlight, so I'm not entirely certain what that's for. Anyways, let's see. This whole assembly may and in fact does come out remove this gasket, which seems to be catching a lot of stuff. Here we have this one big assembly. Oh wow, look at that. We have a three board sandwich. Four boards actually. Possibly even five if you want to include the keypad. Fortunately it seems like they were not totally uncivilized and there are many, 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 many pin headers joining these together. So what we have here is, oh my, look at all of those ICs and all of those wires. So this may be, this is presumed, this is, you know, without a doubt, either RAM or or the, the memory, the static mem RAM for the actual storage. These are M5, M5256 AFP. I bet these are like 256, it's either 256 bytes or, I'm not sure. But so we have, these are M5256 AP, and then these are all, it's all NEC parts, and. All right, no, these M5s are Motorola, and these NEC parts are D43256AGU. So I wonder, because that can't be 256K, because the system only has 640K of RAM, and, and um, well, according to the back, about 800K of disk space, in this case it's static RAM, presumably battery back static RAM. So I wonder what the, the unit these are in. Because presumably this is all your RAM. Here's a big T7755 device. I would bet that that is involved in driving the LCD, which, contrary to my previous expectations, does in fact appear to have an EL backlight. Because that's what those terminals would be. Though I don't see how they're running. Because if that is an EL backlight, that's going to be fairly high voltage, and I don't know how they're getting that power to that board. This whole assembly is mechanically one hell of an affair. Let me see if I can take this LCD board off. Because it looks like there's another PC board in there that's just a mechanical support. You can see all these really big... So this is power buses for all of that, whatever the devices are on the other side. Oops, there's one more screw. Look at that, they're running. So there's four screw holes to hold this LCD down and they're using that one to run traces through. And it appears they've either machined, I'm not sure if that's original, but it looks like they've machined out a hole where these traces used to go for a standoff. And apparently that machining process broke these traces and they've dead bug wired around it. Let's see what is holding you down. Ooh. 
Well, that only had about one thread engaged. So this is, I think the pin's going to the LCD. DAP Electronique LTEE. -E. I guess whoever designed this was French. Let's try and get back. I am not going to bother putting this back together. It's too much of a mess. It's worth noticing, like look here. They've bent some of those pins back held on top of the IC and then soldered wires to them. Sorry, my light's kind of sinking. One second. That should be a little better. Man, look at that high quality soldering job right there. That has been reworked with someone, possibly a monkey. At least it appears that they have tried to glue these wires down. You can see there's some glue holding the wire down there and some glue holding the wire down there. This one is lightly glued down. Look at, oh wow, <laughs> look at that. There's just a chip resistor dangling off into space onto this jumper. So there you can see these part numbers. D43256AGU. And over here we have M5M5256FP. 74HC244, so that's just some 2400 series logic. There's a very nicely soldered decoupling cap. I guess they ran out of surface mount parts. So they started soldering through hole caps onto surface mount decoupling places? My. This is just a, an utter riot. It's such a disaster. Look at this wonderful soldering job there. It's just flux everywhere and it looks like someone who isn't me has tried to scrape the flux between the terminals. Then you can see, you can also see how all of these are, there's big horizontal buses here. You can kind of see how this is, you know, there's basically a bus that runs. So this pin is connected to that pin, is connected to that pin, etc. And presumably this is some sort of bus decoding logic. This is an HC138. I don't remember what that is off the top of my head. Here's more of these hilarious surface mount pads with through hole caps on them, just soldered on, sitting on their edge. And then over here, you can see a lot of the bus. Apparently, this passed QC, despite the total abomination on the other side. There's the rather interesting, completely square profile LCD. So let's see if this comes off. Because if you look down in there, you can see that that's some sort of connector. This may break something, but you know what? I don't care. Or it may just tear the pads off the board. Or tear the traces off the board. Hello. Have a look at that. Yes, we have peeled traces. So it actually pulled the through hole plating out of the holes and then started peeling the traces back. Dap Electronique. So here's the bottom side of this board. So you can see this is the backlight which runs to there and the other one. I'm not too sure where it goes. It's all soldered together. This is all hard soldered. I'm not going to probably try and pry a lot of that up. Here's where these two wires run from here and here and I think they actually like used an end mill and took this divot out because you can see that trace dead ends right there and then I think these two wires replace it and then I'm fairly certain this is a an electroluminescent sheet that basically functions as an LCD backlight. Unfortunately I don't see any way to take this apart without more horrible abuse but if you look down in there you can see screen controller ICs. Well, hold on. Uh, where are my markers? Up there. Let's see if I can't just go like that. It appears I can. And then that may just flex. Pop goes to something or other. So this, oh yeah, 
So these traces were definitely machined. So if we look here, look at that trace that isn't there anymore. So there's where the electroluminescent backlight terminates. And then here's the two pads, and you can actually see this trace here goes through a via there, goes under there, and ends up at this pad. So these two traces ran to the EL backlight. Then my camera may overheat in a second. You can also see that they've gone through the effort to scrub the name off these LCDs because that would be too useful. You know, I mean, what with their cutting edge, horrible bodge jobs here, you know, somebody might rip them off. Let's see if I can pop the front of the LCD off and confirm that it is indeed electroluminescent. Just have to bring the tabs up and then the LCD just kind of peels apart. Oh my. So actually if you look, this is it this is apparently predates zebra strips. So this is the actual interconnect to the LCD. And then it uses that's interesting. This is just a um clamp of some sort, I think. And then that just terminates to the board. Let's see if I can... Oh wait, no. This doesn't predate zebra strips. It has zebra strips in addition. Because look, here's one right there. So a zebra strip is basically a, it's a strip of... Yeah, that's definitely like the lesson. So this is a zebra strip or a zebra strip. So the way these work is there's basically alternating layers of conductive material like carbon filled something, carbon filled polymer and then non-conductive polymer and the end result is that they're only conductive in one direction. There, you can't have any, con there's no conductive crossways. So if you need to connect two, you know, you have two circuit boards and then you just have exposed terminals and then you just squeeze the zebra strip between it and it basically forms a conduction through. So you can see that that connects from these terminals to the bottom side of the board, which is presumably coated with some sort of, you know, like what is it? It's the I forget what the chemical composition is. That zinc compound that's conductive. Here we have good old-fashioned electroluminescent sheet. White balance is rather off, but this is bright pink, and they generally luminesce whitish. So that's presumably what that transformer I saw earlier was for. Anyways. Let's take a look at what I would assume is the CPU board. And I would like to trim this wire. <sighs> kind of made a mess. So here is Bodge Central. So this board, I would assume that this is power supply considering these big inductors. Look at the size of those inductors. So we have some big inductors, capacitors, big TO220 devices, lots of bodges. Here is the electroluminescent backlight inverter, which is in fact a circuit board with a transformer on it, presumably off the shelf, mounted to the main circuit board with sticky tape. So more horrible bodges. Here's a very, very presumably dead tetrian lithium. So this probably maintained the non-volatile memory. Let me grab a multimeter. We will have a poke to see what voltage remains. This is one of the wonderful garbage can multimeters I have. I've actually found several nice multimeters in the rubbish bin. I work at a university and apparently people just don't have any freaking clue what they have. I found laptops in the trash, all sorts of good stuff. So we have a net voltage on this inorganic lithium battery of zero volts. So that is thoroughly dead. Which would also explain why there's no ramp. No firmware or anything left. Continuing on, let's take that board off and see what we can see. So this appears to be held on with the usual assortment of some very, very small Phillips, very short Phillips screws that go into very poorly installed nutserts. High quality manufacturing. And look at that. That So these are... This is an insert that's intended to be swaged into the circuit board. 
and they just did an utterly rubbish job of installing it. So I went to unscrew it and it just totally fell out of the circuit board. So you can see the way this works, it's got little teeth on it and then you poke it through the board and then they take like a V-shaped tool and they shove it into that end and it causes this metal on this edge to expand and it locks it into the board. And then when it comes out of the board, it tears a big, nasty, crater-shaped gouge. Oh, that one has stayed in. Not. This one is a little better installed than any of So we can actually see, here's the headers for these serial interfaces, and it actually is nicely labeled. Ground, RXD1, RTS1, CTS1, DSR1, and another ground. And then presumably over here, this is the other serial port and or the same serial port in two places. So this is again held together with lots of little pins. So there's our power supply board, complete with even more bodges on the bottom. Nice little surface mount caps installed sideways. And then you can also see this is the old Peely style circuit board where when it gets older, the um, Thermal extraction and contraction cycles cause the copper to stretch in and it begins to wrinkle. It doesn't seem to affect the reliability of the circuit too much, but it certainly makes it look interesting. Alright, it appears my video camera is trying to have a nervous breakdown. So this is just... I'm just amazed. This is... I mean, I've seen, like, the occasional green wire fix, but this is like... What we have here is a green wire circuit board. I mean, this isn't even, it's not like one or two parts, or even, you know, the Verbo board, which is, you know, an emergency fix. There's, they've made an entire circuit board for the purpose of installing onto the existing circuit board to fix it. It's rather nicely tied down with a bunch of double-sided foam tape. So, I mean, at least they were trying to make their fixes usable. Oy. So down here we have a funky little bit of plastic. What the devil is that? Is that just a spacer? God, this thing is just shooting parts everywhere. Yep, that is just a rather interesting little shaped plastic spacer. So that appears to just have intended to support this board. And it has spaces underneath. It has little cutouts. Look at that. There's a gray. This gray lead is running right into, soldered onto the leg of one of those eight-pin dips. You know. Then we're going to resistors, and here's another one. Now that's actually going. That's going onto a resistor as well. That right there is tacked onto a diode. Here's a whole mess tacked onto the backside of this big giant interface cable connector. There's actually two wires tacked on right here. Same time. I'm going to start cutting this stuff off just so I can kind of see the board underneath it. I wonder what the volumes they were doing for these were, you know, to make it, you know, even remotely cost effective to do such a massively intricate patch job. I wonder if this was like an, oh god, we have to deliver the product tomorrow. Quick, make a couple models so that we can tell them we've made it work. <laughs> Oops. So there we are. The issue is, is there's just so many bodges on here, I can't tell the serious bodges apart from... Oh, I think I know what this is. This is all backlight. So I think what's going on here is this is off VCC, SD1, ONC ground, AL minus Q. I think the entire backlight assembly is an after the fact design decision. Because look, it appears that this backlight inverter is completely bodged on and this board appears to be talking to the back like converted. It's, it's tied through ugh, some of the glue. So I think they decided after the fact that they wanted to add a backlight and wanted to do that without modifying the board extensively. So they came up with all of this horrible disaster. Well, 
Well, anyways, here are all of the bodge boards. You've got three little... Oh, <laughs> this is a 2N3904. There's a, a VN2222, so that's a 2N2222. There's a 2N3906. Man, these are all just ridiculously common off-the-shelf transistors. So, this is the only interesting part here. And that is a four-pin device. Let's see if I can make that. That is a 2N4220. But that's interesting because if you can make that out, the blasted camera will focus. That has one, two, three, four leads. It's a four-lead CAN device. And then there's a diode on it. So that's rather intriguing. I'll have to look up what that is. Over here we have the little bodge board. That is a 74HCO2, which I think is just a an AND gate or a NAND gate. I don't remember. It's been a while. Here's the little backlight inverter. This is presumably just a blocking oscillator. At least this has a, a C2002K28YB transistor. A little capacitor. Two little capacitors and there's some resistors in there. I can't really peel the adhesive off the bottom to look at the circuit. It's rather... Oh, wait, maybe. Oh, no, it is coming. Never mind. Yeah, wow, look at how simple that is. You've just got two pins, another two pins. So this is presum This has to be the output lead, just because... And then you just got... Let's see, it's only using two pins, so that's got to be just a... I don't know how that works. I don't particularly feel like tracing it out right now. I'm kind of lazy and it's late. So back on this board, we've got IRF9531. That's probably a big power transistor or MOSFET. There's another one. So there's two IRF9531s. I bet those are power switching of some sort. There's an opto. I wonder what the devil that's used for. Maybe that's serial. IRF03EI diode symbol R8B9120. MC145406P. More discrete logic, I would imagine. ICL7665. CD4938 93. Good old CMOS logic. 74HC4050. That's interesting. D8930. There is a, another 2N3904. 3904. 3904. These two parts are interesting. ICL. I'm not familiar. What is that I logo? I'm not familiar with that company. Could that be like a really old Intersil part? I don't know how long intersil has been around. Um. But there's two of them. There's one here, one here. Oh, there's, an, there's a third. What do we have there? MPS A14E8720. And these are some really big chunky inductors. I wonder if there's some sort of funky little DC to DC. There's a Maxim MAX636 ACPA. At least their logo hasn't changed recently. couple pre precision resistors and a lot of just normal resistors. What's under the tape? Ugh. That's not really helping. Just another motor roll apart of some sort. And there's nothing over here aside from bodges. There's a big power diode under there. Big diode on the board in anything. Little potentiometers with little bits of nail polish on them so that you can't rotate them. There's another opto. Man, this thing is just stuffed with bits. Moving on. Here is the actual board of ill repute. Here's your CPU. So that is an 80C88. So this is an 8088 based device. So there's your main CPU. Here we have 74HC373. I don't know what that is off the top of my head. 74HC138. RCAZ CDIT CDPI 87I or 1 ACE 836. Oh, oh that's, an, that's the Intel part. So that's a P82C59A. That's got to be a support chip for this CPU. 
Um, we've got some interesting. This is this is a big sir dip. This isn't. That's not like a plastic dip. That's a ceramic dip package. I wonder why they use such a like a mil spec part there. Because especially since that's just a CD eight two C eight five from Signetics. No shit. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that's a Signet. I don't remember their symbol, but I think that's the Signetics logo. Firmware, firmware, ADC0804. I wonder if that's an analog digital converter from National. Here's some Motorola parts. M5, M82C55AP. Oh, Motorola. It's a Motorola logo, but it says Mitsubishi on it. VLSI stuff. 82C 50PC, 82C 50PC. I wonder if these are UARTs or something like that. Well, that's interesting. Look at that. They actually have a pinout. Why doesn't anyone do that anymore? We also have bodges. He has a couple fixes. These are at least glued down. Here we have... I mean, the bypass caps are through hole, but at least they actually have holes for them. Big resistor arrays. Here's, these are non-volatile memory. ROM 1, ROM 2, DOS version 1.01, .01, version 2.03. I wonder if this has two various DOSs it can boot into. Zero ohm jumper. I wonder what these things are. These are probably um, PALs. Oops. Also, horribly aggressive stickers. Yeah. Does not want to come off. Christ, why would they do that? Probably gonna scrape the logo off too. But what the hell? I've got three of them. something. So that is an Intel, I think. Got a rubber sticker go on. So we have an Intel P5 0060-55, I think. If that's any read more readable there. P5, it may be a C or a 0. 60-55. Zero hey. Let's see how macro this thing will go. Oh. Come on, you know you want to focus. P oh yeah, that is a C, so it's P5C 860-55. And I think it's Intel. There's a big device. MC146818AP. one four six eight one eight AP. QLWR. Excuse me, another opto. I wonder why they have all these optos. I guess they must be trying to isolate ground domains. Here is a clock with the most significant digit of the frequency. A, a, a crystal with the most significant digit of the frequency conveniently soldered over. That's helpful. Lots more pinouts, yet again, with, or not more connectors, with pinouts. Hello, freaking Luya. So that looks to be about it. There's just, oh, look at that. There is a diode soldered on top of that resistor. That's rather amusing. And there, I guess this is something related to an RTC because you've got a little tuning fork crystal and some funky construction. I guess a, a patch resistor in there. With a little tiny capacitor and that's interesting. Uh, is there much else of interest on here? Not really. So a couple little wire fixes on the back. These are not held down at all. <laughs> They're just kind of pulled tight around the IC pins. 
high quality then. The only left thing left is the front of the case, which appears to just be the keyboard. You can see there's one. My, that looks like an after the fact fix too. I think they drilled holes in this and soldered around it. Man, this thing is just, every single aspect of it has been patched and kind of finangled after the fact. You know, I mean, I know the EEV blog he tore down another similar era little portable X thingy that was very similarly totally patched up. But, you know, I, th I guess the general assumption was that that was kind of a, you know, an oh god, it's, you know, it's five in the morning before the release day and they don't work kind of deal. But I guess that that was uh, apparently SOP in that time. My, my. Uh, it's held on with lots of goo. Yeah, huh? Wow, yeah, so look at that. They have hacked a trace. So they have another button input. That is hilarious. Now on top of that, that's just a really kind of a janky hack. Because it looks like the wire is only connecting to like the upper quadrant. So you have a button and so there, one of the electrodes is, so the, here's one electrode and you can see that it kind of connects to these traces that run out there and then the other electrode is connected through these two vias. And this electrode, this section here, they cut this trace here and only connected this electrode to these three little leads that run like that. So just this little upper segment of this is being used for this wire. Which incidentally, has a sticker labeling it as on. I bet this is the backlight switch. So I bet they've literally hacked into the keyboard to put a to override to steal off this keypad matrix so that this will turn the backlight on. I wish I had known that. I would have held this button down for a few seconds to see if it turned it on or not. But well, oi. So I would put money on it that that horrible janky patch which runs through to here. Looks like they just drilled little holes in the circuit board and routed the wire. At least they glued this down with a little bit of silicone. That's presumed to fall off the board at this point. Ugh. It's all gooey. So I would put my, I would bet that that was like an after-the-fact backlight modification. I think this didn't originally have a backlight and they kind of like herpaderp patched it in, you know. I wonder if this is a prototype or something, because I can't imagine they went into production with the disaster that was all those little patches. I wonder how the hell it wound up at a thrift store in Santa Barbara. But yeah, this does look to just be a little... Oh, that's just a cover piece. So it does look like they added a label here. At least they didn't just put a sticker here, they put a label the whole width. So anyways, there you go, the inside of a rather hilariously badly constructed electronic, you know, old school mobile computing device. Looks like hand applied silicone to hold that in. Anyways, hope you found this interesting. I now have a desk full of junk. I'm just going to probably throw all this in the rubbish bin. I mean, I don't know what I'd do with it. I and mean, you can just buy it. Like, you know, if I wanted an 80C88, I could just buy it on DigiKey for like five bucks. It's not really what we're trying to fix. Toshiba parts, that's an old Toshiba logo. Okay, hope you enjoyed it.